Hi guys, it's Master Coach Tony Morgan, and on today's video we're looking at a Potterton Gold Electric Flow Boiler. So on this um, Potterton Gold, what it does, it heats up this cylinder, and it also heats up the heating. So we've got two zone valves, that's an S plan system. It's a fully pumped system, also it's a seal system as well, because we've got the expansion vessel pressure gauge, if you look closer, you can see the filling loops are open. The pressure is quite high, so it's been left like that. I also noticed on these zone valves here, this one, it's left open, being jammed open like that. So on the hot water zone valve, you can tell which it is because if you follow the pipe down it goes there into here normally the flow would be on the bottom sorry on the top but this is on the bottom so that's a bit funny now like I said it's usually the way around the flow is usually on the top like that but it's on this it's on the reverse so on this cylinder this is a special one because you've got the cold water storage on the top and the hot water underneath now you would think in this section here would be where the hot water goes to the taps but it's not this is a thermal store cylinder so all this part of it is stored hot water so what it's got inside is a coil which is heated so the, yeah the coil is heated up indirectly so this surrounding water which is a thermal store heats up cold water so the cold water comes in through here through that strainer goes into the bottom of the coil goes through the coil picks up heat from that surrounding storage water and then comes out hot here goes through this mixing valve, blends and then goes out to the taps cylinder. So this cold part, top part here, so the cold water storage, that then just tops up the thermal store if the level drops down. The tenant's been living here about six months and she says it's never worked properly to get hot water and heating so we're going to try and investigate what's going on. So this is a programmer now as you can see the display is gone so that's not good that should be shown all the time so when you say let's do the hot water the light comes on but no display let's try the heating now you can see a display so that's a bit dodgy so i think there's a problem with the programmer as i said that should be displaying all the time if you look at the um, boiler here, you can see the call light, or the, that named call, the light at the side of it is not displaying, that should be illuminated because we've got demand on here from the timer programmer, but no demand on the call light. So there's a fault there. That should come from the zone valve, or both of them. One of them at least should be putting power on to the boiler and having that car light come on. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to hand you over to my apprentice, Miles, and he's going to go through the diagnostics, what we would do to find out which of the val valves are faulty and where the fault lies. So Miles is going to take over. Right, so first things first, we're going to start by verifying that this programmer is sending power out. So we know that behind here, if we remove the cover, there's two outlets, one for the hot water and one for the heating. So the outlet for the hot water will be outlet number three. So we're gonna remove the cover and identify which wire is on the outlet. So we've removed the cover, as you can see, but we also had to remove the cover for the wiring center to get on the screws. So just to make sure we're operating in a safe environment. I'm just going to test that the power is off. 
So I've gone across the live and neutral, and as you can see, there's no power. I'm also going to go across the live and earth, and there's no power. So now we know we're working safely. Right, so now we can identify our wire on outlet number three, which is the one for the hot water, like I said. So if you look here, we've got this brown on number three. So we're going to trace this, this wire down here. And as you can see, here's our brown coming to this port here. So now we can test. Turn the power on and see if the power is going to the outlet. Okay, so one thing I've just noticed, and this is through my reality classroom training, where basically we're in front of a scenario just like this. We go over it and over it so that in reality we know what to do. We know how to identify and fault find. So this outlet number three goes down here, but where is it connected to? It's supposed to be connected to the common on the cylinder stat. But as you can see, I don't know if you can see that, it is connected to nothing. So we've got a wiring problem here, and that is the cause of our problem. So now we've seen that this is connected to nothing, it shows that. You know, this job wasn't done properly. It, it cannot work as it's supposed to in accordance with the wiring and how it should be. So obviously there's some bad workmanship been done on this job. So here's a hot water zone valve. And as coach said before, you can see it's been jammed open. So it's, you know, it's permanently open and this kind of explains it. The fact that the output from the programmer is connected to nothing. You know, it sums up why it's been jammed open permanently. So the next step, we're going to see what this cylinder sat here. We're going to see what it's really connected to. Okay, so we trace a wire from the cylinder thermostat. So it's this blue here, and as you can see, it's not connected to anything. And also this brown, which also isn't connected to anything. So this means the hot water's got no controls whatsoever. So this is really, really bad. So now we need to get inside the cylinder thermostat and see which one is the common. Because as I said earlier, the common is what's connected to outlet three on the programmer. We've removed the cover from the cylinder stat and we've identified that the common is this brown wire here. So now we know that this is a common, we can go back up to our wiring center and connect this to the outlet from three on our programmer. Now coach has just brought to my attention that now that the cover's off on the cylinder start, we can actually test if it's working by putting a multimeter in continuity <coughs> and going across these connections here. So if I don't get a beep like this, that means that the cylinder start is open circuit or that it's off. So I'm just gonna go across these connections now Right, so there's no beep, so that means it's off. I'm just going to turn the cylinder start up now. You hear that click. And then we'll go across it again. And we've got that beep, so now we know our cylinder start is working. We're back up at the wiring centre, and I'm just going to connect that brown that we identified as a common to that outlet coming from the programmer on number three. So that's in now, so just tighten it up. As you can see, the brown coming from the cylinder stat is now connected to the port, which goes up to outlet three on the programmer. So that part is correct. This is our hot water zone valve. Now we need to identify the brown coming from this zone valve because that is the power to this activate this zone valve. So I followed the wire here and I've located this brown which is connected to nothing as you can see. So we need to connect our output 
from the cylinder stack, which is our blue, to our brown here, which sends power to the zone valve. So I've got the wire there, so now that's correct, I'm going to tighten it up. Now we verified that the hot water side of things is wired correctly. But as you saw before, the display on the programmer wasn't displaying as it should. So that could be another problem. And also, the zone valve might have gone because there's power there now, but it might not open. We'll just go over the wiring on the heating now. So as I said before, the port for the heating, the outlet for the heating is number four, this blue wire. So we trace this down and see this comes to this port here, this terminal here, and it comes out on the yellow, which goes to our room stat. Then the return from the room stat is this red, and it comes out on this brown, which goes to the heating zone valve. So we know that this is wired correctly. So as you can see, the power's on, the demand's on, the programmer, the, there's a display. So we're just gonna go across the neutral and our output from the programmer for the hot water. If you look at the multimeter, you can see there's no power. So this says that the programmer is definitely faulty. I've just done an electrical test on the room thermostat and it is actually working. I'll just show you now. So on the neutral and the power in from the room stat, you can see we've got 240 and the power out. We've got power there as well. We know 100% that this isn't working because it's not sending any power on the output for number three. But because it's not sending any power out, we don't know if this zone valve is faulty or not. So to test that, we're going to take the output from the three and put it on our room thermostat, which we know is getting power. And then we can verify whether or not this zone valve is faulty. So I've took the output from three, which is the output for the hot water, which we're getting no power from, and I've moved it onto the heating. So there's power on it now. So I'm just going to test that the return from the cylinder stat has got power. So I'll go across the neutral and the blue. So as you can see, there's power there. Yeah. Now I'm going to see if our zone valve is opened. So we should get no resistance. as you can see it's springing right back so this zone valve is faulty so our conclusion is that we need to replace this programmer and also replace this zone valve